Hi, it's Dr. Mike from Beat Autism Now. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about an overview of what autism is and what we're going to start doing about it. Right now we have a serious problem. You know, in the 80s, autism affected 1 in 10,000 children. Uh, in the early 2000s, it became 1 in 166, and then shortly thereafter, 1 in 150 kids. And now we're talking about 1 in 91 children will develop autism. Um, where are we going to be in five years? The numbers are just escalating. It's grown 57% just in the last four years alone. So it's, um, it's a major problem, and unfortunately, it's, it's being mismanaged. Uh, one in 50,000 boys becomes a professional athlete, and now one in 58 boys ends up with an autism diagnosis. So, you know, the, the odds are pretty bad, and, you know, worries me at this point, to, you know, are, are people really considering this when they think about having children, you know, and you have to really be a little worried at this point to have a child. Um, what is autism? You know, let's define it because sometimes people really don't understand what it is. Uh, it's actually a description of the mental, emotional, and behavioral symptoms that, that children have. So commonly, you know, a child that is diagnosed with, uh, with autism will have problems communicating. Uh, sometimes they have language, sometimes they don't have language. They have problems socializing. Uh, they aren't able to play with other children. They'd rather be, you know, on their own. They exhibit repetitive behaviors where, you know, they may do something over and over and over, stereotypical types of behaviors, um, sensory issues, things along those lines. But those, they would consider, um, again, like behaviors that um, are abnormal. These symptoms are actually just that. They're symptoms as an end result of a long-standing biochemical and neurological problem that really goes undiagnosed. So, you know, we're calling this thing autism, and yet that to me is just a descriptive term for what's going on, the overall, uh, you know, label that a child would get, but nobody's really looking underneath to try to find out why. Why is this happening? So we have a working hypothesis here. Autism is a medical disorder. It's not a mental disorder. Um, a mental disorder implies that you have a disorder of thought. And, you know, we're able to identify children as young as 12 months old as having autism. You know, we're able to identify changes in, in the way they move and changes in, in you know, um, in their development that, you know, is, is pretty telling that this child is going to have a developmental issue. Uh, usually it's not diagnosed until a little, bit, a little bit later on, but what is a child thinking about at 18 months old? You know, is it a disorder of thought or is it a problem with thought after the fact. So this starts out as a disorder of development and they, these, these kids have immature and underdeveloped nervous systems. That's really what's going on. So you have a child that's, let's say, five years old uh, chronologically, but inside, developmentally, they may only be three years old. Autism and the spectrum disorders are actually a syndrome of bio-neurodysfunction. So there's a whole series of things that are going wrong biochemically and neurologically, and that is the problem. As a result of that, and as a result of those things going wrong, a child misses out on development, and their development goes very, very slowly. So when we look at developmental milestones, a child at one is supposed to do certain things. A child at two is supposed to do certain things. Um, kids that are diagnosed on the autism spectrum do not do those things on time, and as a result, they have this developmental delay. Kids with ASD have a biologically impaired brain. The research tells us that something's going wrong in the development of the brain cells. The connections between the cells, the biochemistry of the ability to you know, have nerve impulses and so on. Um, all these things are impacted and we need to find out exactly what's going on in each child. The bottom line really is that autism is treatable and we need to find out what's happening in each and every child and then treat those different things that we find. So what's actually wrong? We have, there's a new field in genetics called epigenetics, which is the environment's impact on our genes. So we know now that something that you are exposed to can actually influence the way your genes or your DNA works. And you can then pass that on to your children, that, that little fault that happens to your DNA. So we know now that epigenetics plus some environmental stressor, either during, you, you know, in utero, during the mother's pregnancy, or shortly thereafter, can alter biochemistry and neurological connectivity and actually develop a situation where this child is predisposed to having autism. 
uh, babies then born, uh, they experience more environmental stress and it just compounds the problem. You know, Martha Herbert, who is uh, an outstanding MD PhD at Harvard, said right now we know of no genes that are directly or inevitably causing autism. So this is not a purely genetic disorder. The bottom line is that environmental toxins cause changes in our biochemistry which leads, uh, which leads to altered development. So when we as individuals are growing up and we're exposed to all kinds of different uh, environmental chemicals and so on, that changes the way our bodies work. We then get together with another person, we get married, have a child, um, that child now has a slight alteration in the way their DNA works as a result of this exposure that their parents had and now they have a subtle change in the way the DNA is actually you know configured um, in, in such a way that it allows for abnormal biochemistry to take place and that's really what's going on when you have this this chemical insult and all the literature is telling us that that's what's happening uh, it just causes a series of developmental changes that allow for this thing called autism to take place. So instead of a preoccupation with how to label this and what to call it, I think that what we really need to be doing is looking at some hard questions. Where do these symptoms come from? You know, what actually is going on in my child that's causing them to have this self-stimulatory behavior, if you will? Um, why do they only move their bowels once a week? Or why do they have chronic diarrhea every single day? Uh, you know, why, why do they do all the different things that they do that would allow them to be classified as autistic to begin with? What keeps it going? What allows this to, to take hold and to be so intense that, you know, you, no matter what you do and even despite all these early interventions, this child just doesn't seem to be able to get through and, and bridge the gap from where, where they are to where they should be? What causes that to keep going? What can be done to change the dysfunctional balance? Is there something that can be done? Is this, is this really, can we have an effect on this so that we can actually alter the course of development? So to sum it up, this is not a primary cognitive learning or behavioral problem. Autism is a systems-wide biological dysfunction that results in these cognitive learning and behavioral consequences. These kids are sick and they need to be treated. And what we need to do is find the right doctors that can treat our children. And we really need to know what's going on. That's the bottom line. So you need some answers as a parent. What is the nutritional status of my child? What is their detox capacity? Can they get rid of toxins once they enter the system? How much oxidative stress do they have? Uh, how's their GI function? And not only are they you know, moving their bowels normally, but what's going on underneath that? Um, do they have food allergies or food intolerances? Do they have any genetic predispositions that we might be able to identify? Uh, do they have chronic inflammation? And do they have toxicity, either chemical or heavy metal or anything along those lines? You need a strategy, basically. Um, you know, this is a marathon. Treatment of autism is definitely not something that we're accustomed to. We're, we're the immediate gratification human beings that can be, you know, having the flu one day and feel horrible and feel like you're never going to get better and a week later you could be playing tennis. That's not the way this works, unfortunately. This is like a very, very long-term, arduous process where we have to rework the way these kids' systems are actually um, functioning on a day-in and day-out basis. We have to change the way they assimilate food. We have to change the way they uh, get their nutrient status um, up to par. And, you know, that it takes a lot of work. Um, what you can't do is, is say, you know, I tried this for, a, I tried this gluten-free diet that I read about on the internet. I did it for six weeks and it didn't work. I didn't see any changes. In order to really see some changes, you have to do something consistently for, for three to six months minimum. And then you can make decisions as to whether or not it's working. And if you don't see any changes and you move on and you try another intervention, um, you know, what you might be surprised is that you were taking for granted that some improvement was happening and what you realize is when you stop doing something, you see a little bit of a regression, you go back and jump back on that one. Uh, happens, you know, quite commonly. You need a 12 and a 24 month goal. So you want to think about where do I want my child to be two years from now? And then work backward and try to come up with a plan in order to help them get there. 
and you want to be intimately involved with what's going on educationally. You know, who are the therapists that are working with your child? What is their philosophy? Do they feel that this actually, you know, is possible, that recovery is possible? You know, ask these questions. And, you know, do you have a doctor that you're working with that actually is on board with the whole idea of biomedical or bionutritional uh, neurological interventions to actually treat the underlying problems? Because if you don't, you need to find one. If your doctor is saying, oh, this is not a treatable problem, then you need a new doctor. Um, I put together a book called Beat Autism Now, and I think you'll find a whole bunch of information that will be really pertinent to your journey. And if you go to www.beatautismnow.com, you can download the book and you can learn all about this stuff. It's, it's very, very important that you take control of what's going on in your child's life, and uh, I think you should do it right now.